morning, everybody, um, and welcome to the Durham Wheat Sector Breakout Room. I'm uh, Valentina Manstretta from Orta, and I will briefly illustrate you what uh, what was the work carried out in the medical project for the Durham Wheat Sector. As you probably know from uh, to this morning presentations, in the project we had uh, three case studies focusing in uh, different uh, uh, Mediterranean countries. So for Durham uh, wheat, uh, for the Durham wheat sector, we had the case study in, it, in Italy, and uh, our champion was uh, is Barilla, which is the main Italian food uh, pasta producer. Uh, here, just a brief recap, uh, recap of the stages uh, of the of the development of the climate services uh, that have been followed in uh, every in all of the three sectors in uh, the project. So we went uh, through a first stage uh, aimed to assess the need uh, of the whole uh, supply chain for um, for climate information. And uh, for this task, we carried out focus group with uh, experts in the field of uh, Durham uh, wheat, involving agronomists, uh, technicians, uh, uh, staff from elevators, and uh, also from uh, breed, breeding companies to uh, engage with them and uh, to assess their needs in terms of uh, information. After this first uh, stage, we went uh, through the development of uh, the tool in uh, which we develop a new functionality based on the seasonal forecast for the decision support system granoduro.net, which is uh, used by the actors in the Barilla, food, in the Barilla supply chain. And uh, also a dashboard for Durham wheat has been developed uh, in the project. We went uh, then through a stage of testing the tool in which the new functionality developed was presented to end users and tested by a selected panel of them. And then we, we performed a, a, an additional assessment of the value of the tool, presenting it to a broader audience and assessing their thoughts on what was developed by mean of focus group and workshops. As a, as a first stage, uh, as, you, as I told you, we engaged with uh, experts and uh, the main result of this interaction was the design and the identification of indexes relevant for the Durham wheat cultivation. These indexes were then co-designed with uh, experts in the field and in the end we developed uh, six indicators based on the ideological balance, which uh, are calculated both for the whole cropping season and for the main periods identified on the base of wheat, wheat phenologies. Then uh, we also selected seven indicators based on rain, in this, always in, also in this case, uh, they were calculated for different phenological periods to provide information about uh, water needs or ex ex excess of water, which can pose uh, problems to the crop. And uh, in the end, uh, we had three indicators based on temperature, one assessing the cold, the, 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 the cold stress event, mainly during the sensible uh, wheat phenology stage, or the hot stress events during the flowering and grain feeding period. So uh, after having developed these, uh, uh, these indexes, we introduced them in the new functionality of the decision support system, granodura.net, which I already told you is used to support uh, the sustainable management of durum wheat crop by the Barilla suppliers. 
in uh, this tool is granodura.net is uh, an already existing tool which provides uh, support for decision for the whole cropping season uh, cropping management uh, actions and uh, we added a new functionality which is based on seasonal forecast we first developed a phenology section in this new functionality uh, which is aimed to provide information on uh, wheat uh, development based on the seasonal forecast. Here in the slide, you can see how the new functionality looks like. You see in the first period of uh, the growing season, we have a, a unique line, which is, calculating, which is the phenological uh, development calculated based on observed uh, weather data. While uh, here, since uh, the start of the seasonal forecast, we have a group of lines which represent, each one represents the, a member of the ensemble for the forecast. And uh, um, we can see here um, how phenology is uh, forecasted using this uh, climate information. We then uh, developed uh, a, a, function, a, a tab on uh, the risk of diseases in which uh, models uh, or indexes, uh, risk indexes for the main diseases of durum wheat are also fed with uh, this uh, information coming from the seasonal forecast and uh, for each uh, period in which the, the crop is uh, susceptible to the disease, uh, the risk is calculated and uh, the color of uh, the line represents, uh, um, represents the risk with uh, a traffic uh, light color code. So the user can immediately see if there is risk and which is the most uh, risky period for the main diseases, which are rust, septorium, powdery mildew, and the fusarium at, at blight. Here we come to the third tab in which uh, the indexes that were co-developed with the users are displayed. And uh, for example, here you can see how uh, an index based on the ideological balance, ideological balance from uh, stem elongation to the booting stage is calculated and is uh, displayed to the users, always using a color code, which is, uh, uh, which is um, described by the, the caption of the figure. The last part of this tool then displays how these indexes performed in the last years. So the user can have an overview of how the past years were characterized. Beside the, the development of the, this new functionality in the granodura.net decision support system, um, the project uh, develop, developed also a dashboard to display also these uh, kind of indexes for, for the main uh, crop considered in the project. So the dashboards has a part for each of the crop and, and does it also has a part for the durum wheat sector. Here is uh, how it uh, looks like when uh, entering the dashboard, it is possible to select uh, the seasonal forecast uh, tab and then the bioclimatic in indexes. It is possible to select the region, which is Italy for the Juron with uh, case study. And uh, then uh, the index displayed is the hydrological balanced calculated for the whole cropping uh, crop cycle of the crop. So I would uh, now go to a live demonstration 
of both the granodura.net and uh, the dashboard and uh, leave uh, the floor to question if, if any. So um, here we, we are inside the tool, the granodura.net decision support system. Each line is a different uh, crop uh, unit which is a piece of crop managed in a, in a unique way. And uh, beside the, the already existing functionality, a new one was added for this, uh, which is based on the seasonal forecast. So we can click on it and see how the, how the tool is actually works. We, here we are in a crop unit of past years, so we will always see this green line, green line which is calculated based on observed data, but uh, we need to imagine that uh, if we are in, a, in the present, if we would be in, a, in the present uh, cropping season, this line would be interrupted at uh, today point and uh, and only the, the forecast would, the user would, would uh, be able to see only the forecast so here the user is able to select the the month in, in which the, the seasonal forecast was released so let's imagine to select February and then the system takes uh, some time to calculate uh, the every model using uh, this uh, information. So in this first tab, we will see how the phenology is calculated on the base of the seasonal forecast. And here, as you see, the red line is uh, the time in which uh, the forecast was released. And starting from this line, we see the bunch of line representing the member of the ensemble. This is a way to display the information to the user. There is also the option to show this as a table, uh, which reports the main phenological stages, the actual uh, data, the actual date in which the phenological stage was reached, and then the forecast of the, the, yes, the forecast. If we go to the next tab, we have the risk for diseases. Here, as before, we are able to select the, the run in, of the seasonal forecast. And here we are able to select the, the disease we want to, to see the prediction for. For example, let's take the powdery mildew. Or in this case, the system requires some time. And then you will see uh, it will display the, the risk for the disease in the main phenological stages in which uh, the crop is uh, sensitive to, to the disease. In this case, we see uh, a green line for, for all the phenological stages, but in principle, it can, the prediction can be different for the different uh, phenological stages. Going to the next tab here, we have uh, the one dealing with the displaying the indexes which were co-developed with the users. You see uh, all of them. So the first one are based on the hydrological balance. Then we have the one based on rain and the one based on temperature. Let's uh, take for example, this hydrological balance during tillering. And 
and then uh, we will see uh, um, now the system is calculating the index and uh, here we see the, the prediction of uh, the calculation maybe it was not uh, let me okay well, we see the color and uh, here the caption explaining uh, how uh, the, what the index is and uh, the meaning of the color. And here we have the last uh, part in which we can see the, the we can select the index and see how it uh, was in this area for the last years. We can go then uh, move to the dashboard. As, uh, as I told you, you can uh, enter the dashboard. It uh, requires a username and password. When uh, this is what uh, you see when you enter, you can then select uh, the tab on seasonal forecast. You can select uh, the type of index so based on climate, bioclimatic, or the wine risk, now we are dealing with the dual wheat sector, so we select the bioclimatic indexes. We select uh, Italy, as it was uh, the country for the case study on dual wheat. And here we have uh, for dual wheat this index, uh, that is the ideological balance calculated for the whole crop cycle of doing it. If we go on the squares, we can see the value forecasted with the, by the, the model. Here also you have the possibility to select the year you want the prediction for and to select also the, the month in which the forecast were made. And uh, by if you select uh, in the area you, you want to, you will uh, get this graph which uh, displays you how the, um, the value of the, the indexes in the last uh, 30 years, if uh, the index was forecasted to be uh, in the in the mean or up in the upper tercile or in the lower tercile and then you see the dot are the the value of the index calculated with the actual data so you can have information on uh, on how the the forecast performed in the last 30 years and uh, you can also download uh, this graph uh, and uh, you can use it for, uh, for your evaluation. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, all uh, I wanted to, to tell you. And uh, if anyone wants to add any com comment or I don't know if we have questions. Well, I have a comment uh, saying that um, actually it is not true that I uh, that I was aware of the latest development because I haven't seen uh, the um, uh, Durum Wheat indicators on the dashboard before and and so uh, i think that is uh, a nice class development yeah maybe i can ask uh, something um uh, i understand this is uh, quite a new development 
but uh, did you already have some feedback from uh, end users on uh, on the, the platform and on the new development in the granoduro.net uh, platform are they already used to the team well they we had some uh, selected uh, end user testing uh, the tool in uh, the last season and uh, we collected some uh, positive uh, comment anyway if not uh, this is a, this is yet a, a pilot uh, uh, development so it's not uh, it's not on uh, production and it's not it's not uh, cannot be used by uh, every users in uh, of the dss because it, we are still working on, on it and uh, and uh, we developed this pilot uh, in, in the project and uh, we still have uh, to do some uh, work to to have it uh, ready for to be delivered to to all of the users okay thank you And maybe also a question to Chiara. Um, have you played with uh, um, with this new component, Durum Wheat component on the on the dashboard? Have you seen it before? Does uh, has anybody in, at Barilla uh, played with that? I see from the chat that Chiara is having problem with the microphone. Maybe she can answer on the chat. Go. Uh, Sandro, uh, Chiara is asking in the chat uh, if you can repeat the, the question and uh, she will answer uh, in the chat, I guess. Uh, okay, I can't see. Then I we can't can see, see the. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ah, okay. Um, I was asking uh, Chiara if you had uh seen the new component on durum wheat on the dashboard if you had a chance to uh, play with that or if anybody else at uh, barilla had a chance to play with that to have a look at that just you know to have your uh, impression your feedback Okay. Okay, so ju just to just to put it on on the recordings. Uh, Chiara is writing that uh, yes, she has played with that and and she hoped that it could be extended further to uh, other indicators which is certainly possible. And I also think that uh, some of the uh, data are even actually uh, already there. Uh, 
but uh, well, we started with this one, which was you know, the, the more generic. We, we need to see if, you know, there is an actual interest in, in uh, uh, extending and, and, uh, and, uh, and continuing to have the uh, platform uh, uh, operational. Actually, uh, we are uh, planning with Massimiliano uh, a session on this to see how we can uh, continue to uh, at least produce the data. Hello, I have a question. Um, Angela Fiore from INSPRA, the Italian Institute for Environmental Protection and Research. And maybe I didn't have the opportunity to join the um, open session this morning. Maybe you already explained that this morning. But my question is about the model, uh, the phenological model that are under this uh, with uh, tools and uh, which model uh, is used by the system and uh, if you validated with the field data this model. <laughs> Uh, yes, the the with the with the phenological model used in Granodura.net is uh, validated and is uh, calibrated for several uh, wheat varieties, and um, it was uh, initially published in a work from uh, Rossi and. Uh, and uh, others, other authors in uh, 1997. And uh, then uh, it was uh, kept, uh, it was improved and uh, extended to, to other varieties. So it, it is, uh, it has been validated in this. Okay, uh, sorry, can you repeat the name of the model? What? The name? Okay, don't worry. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, the, the, the author of the article is uh, Rossi. Okay, so maybe also I can search in the material published of the project uh, for sure will be named, so I can look uh, in the report maybe. Uh, yes, it's okay, uh, thank Professor you. Vittorio Rossi from Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> La interrompiamo qua, la registrazione. Direi di sì. Dai, bello. Bene, non sapevo che non avessi visto... No, io non l'avevo visto. Della Chiara A è stata la fautrice principale, diciamo, di questo eh, sviluppo. Certo. È stata una corsa all'ultimo, cioè per mettere nella dashboard almeno un... Un indicatore, un indicatore per ogni settore e appunto certo. sul, sul grano duro c'era almeno questo insomma. Mm -hmm. Ho riportato nella chat l'articolo Simulation Model for the Development of Brown Rust Epidemics in Grazie. Grazie, sì. grazie mille. Adesso ci metto siamo d'accordo in separata sede con Massimiliano e stavamo appunto vedendo come eh, riuscire a rimettere in funzione tutto il... Uh, lì dentro, bene. Guarda Vale. Ah, è quello, quello che era morto. No, <ride> no, no, no. Il sostituto di quello il che sostituto era. Di quello morto. Il sostituto del morto. Il morto è stato di là da qualche parte. Se a... Il morto è morto, lo, sono riuscito a controllare, a, a vederlo oggi perché sono tornato nella mia stanza qui, come vedete. Credo che sia morto il 10 o l'11 ottobre. 
perché è l'ultimo segnale di vita che ho ricevuto. Ma cos'è che è successo? Eh, eh, no, eh, niente, è defunto il server, è defunto il server di calcolo. E... È una parte Quindi... di Medgold con esso? Eh? È una parte di Medgold con esso. È una parte di Medgold con, parte di Mad Gold con esso perché diciamo comunque metterlo in funzione da un'altra parte eh, purtroppo mi sono reso conto che è un uh, lavoro che non riesco a fare eh, diciamo parallelamente a, a tutto quello che devo fare adesso dall'altra parte che è molto molto corposo sì. e comunque... Però, diciamo l'idea è quello di ricostruire una, una nuova catena operativa perché poi è quello la, la sostanza dell'esigenza dell sì. insomma ecco è perché questo limita l'operatività giusto? era quello da cui derivavano i dati sì No, perché devo dire che prima, sì, che prima del, o, o appena prima del defunzionamento di tutto eh, il, il sistema stava funzionando abbastanza bene perché gli ultimi dati prodotti, sia quelli che vanno per Delphi, sia questi qui della, della dashboard, diciamo che erano stati... Eh, poi erano stati prodotti quasi senza mettere mano in modalità eh, quasi automatica insomma l'ho sorvegliata un pochino per vedere che tutto andasse bene ma in effetti eh, stava funzionando tutto in maniera abbastanza liscia e quindi qualcosa però poteva andare male e lo ha fatto puntualmente come stamattina come, come stamattina sta... la cosa come stamattina la rete dell'Enea esatto, esatto. comunque no, su... qui, se riuscite a ripristinare la, la catena poi diciamo che l'interesse da parte nostra c'è a mm -hmm. continuare su questo argomento quello sì. Sì, però per, certo. per tutta la parte dei dati al momento dipendiamo da, 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 dall'esterno dall sì sì ma vale comunque tieni conto che c'è anche Piero Toscano ovviamente che è interessato a questa cosa qui quindi diciamo con Sandro già ci siamo organizzati insomma adesso dobbiamo solo trovare eh, qualche momento per chiarire la cosa Perfetto. però l'intenzione per... sì, è sì. quella insomma adesso sì. lo facciamo Coinvolgiamo sì, sì. anche una collega di sì, uh, qui, Sara che del CNR. Sì. Sì. E poi per gli cioè, insomma, sappiate eh, che sicuramente Tiziano e Gigi sono disponibili a parlarne per vedere sì, sì, come sì. Certo. Sì, sì, anche appunto Tiziano. <coughs> l'aveva già espressa questa cosa qui anche del, del fatto che eh, cioè dell'interesse anche a, a, a lavorarci insomma però l'idea c'è la decisione anche adesso la stiamo implementando però non, non manca molto eh, secondo me perché Sandro aveva fatto diciamo appunto tutta una serie di cose che già funzionavano da sole per cui è solo questione di, di portarle da un'altra parte di portarle parte. da un'altra parte aggiustare e... piccole cose da Linux a Mac, ma insomma tutta roba fattibile. Fattibile, sì. Direi di sì. Chi è SLP? Si level pressure. Si level, <ride> oltre a si level pressure, infatti. Sta... Ok, dai. Va bene? Va bene. Oh, grazie per la presentazione. Grazie Valentina. Grazie Vale. E Buon grazie a tempo. tutti. E poi... Eh, niente, va bene, ci sentiamo...
ci sentiamo nei prossimi giorni Massi per, sì, sì, per fissare, per fissare un... Qual... Almeno, sì, sì. almeno un paio di appuntamenti va bene va bene ok ok va bene ciao 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 